Okay. All right, we'll do. <laughs> Welcome to Getting Better. I am Anvil, your host, and I am joined today at NRB. We are actually in Nashville at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, and I have the Rabbi Jason Stobel. And he is here. I he I would say he's from the chosen, but he does so many other things. My co-host is Dr. Jim Slaughter. Hi, everybody. Good to be with you today. I'm excited to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be with you all. You do so many things. You have your new book, The Mysteries of the Messiah. Is this your second book? Uh, yes. Yeah. Four, it's, yeah. It's it's the second major publication. Oh, okay. And then your first book, your first book was? Uh, the Rock, the Road, and the Rabbi with Kathy Lee Giffey. I love that one. Yeah. So who came up with that? Uh, she came up with The Rock and the Road, and when I came involved, she added the rabbi. But technically, I'm not the rabbi. Jesus is ultimate. Uh, but uh, I'm the rabbi commentating on the rabbi. <laughs> we actually were just learning all about you. And we watched some different shows that you had been on, and you talked about Jonathan Kahn. Yes. And yes. him, him, did he lead you yeah, to Christ? Yeah, he led me to the Lord. All right. And how old were you? Oh, my goodness. I turned about 20. I, I, spent, I turned 20 at the time he led me to the Lord. And uh, I was invited with my friend to go to his congregation. At the end of the evening, they dimmed the lights and played the piano and prayed. I figured I needed all the help, like, they were searching. They said, if you pray the prayer for the first time, raise your hand. I raised my hand. They said, if you raise your hand, you've just been born again. I had no idea what it meant to be born again. So Jewish kids should not get born again. I gave my mother enough trouble when I was born once. God only yeah. knows. But, yes. you know, the Lord used them. Hey, it was too late. It's too late. So once you raised, yeah, that was it. it. I said, too late. <laughs> too You're late. already born again. He said, I saw you raise your hand. You have to stand up. There's no <laughs> options. That is exciting, though, at 20. Yeah. You know? And that was a little while ago. I a little while ago. Little while ago. And I can imagine the past. Over 20 years. And has it been an amazing time, <laughs> 20 years? Not boring? Not not boring. You know, God's got a good sense of humor. You know, he's, uh, you know, one time, a number of years ago, about 15 years ago, God said to me, I'm going to take you through the pits and the prisons, but I'm going to prepare you for the promise. And there's been some pits in prisons. There's been some stripping of the tunic like Jesus, like Joseph had along the way. But you know what? It's It's been a blessing. God has used it in our lives. And so we've got, we got to embrace this thing. So I would like to first start off, got to talk about your book. Yes. Mysteries of the Messiah, Unveiling Divine Connections from Genesis to Today. Divine Connection. Don't you think that's a fascinating title? I, I, I said, so I said, this is a intriguing title. I'm dying to read this book. Well, tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of reasons why I wrote the book. I mean, one is, I'll never forget, I was right before the Super Bowl. And I decided to go ahead and get a high-definition television. You see the game. And I was like, I watched I was like, this isn't so great. And then I had a realization at the end of the game, I was looking through the channels, that the higher channels were the high definition channels. I watched the whole game in standard definition. Oh, wow. You didn't use your HD. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Right. right. But I feel like many people read the Bible in standard definition when God wants to see us in definition. When we understand how the old and the new connect, it brings the Bible to life and it reveals uh, mysteries that maybe we might have missed. It makes it so much more exciting. I, you know, and I, I think I did that. I think in, you know, I was trying to read it when I was young, and I was trying to read it even in college. And I, I was often in the Old Testament, and I actually had a friend who, he was a strong Christian, and he asked me what my favorite book, because he thought I was a strong Christian. So I've been in church my whole life. And he asked me what my favorite book in the Bible was. And I said, oh, the Old Testament. And he went, I can see his, I remember his face now. He was very kind at the time, right? right? He looked confused. And so he was he was kind, but eventually I attended church. There was a new church being built in Plano. It was they had outside Dr. Jean Getz coming right. soon, whatever. And a friend of mine said, I wonder if that's Dr. Jean Getz that wrote the measure of a man, right? And so we started and I had never I'd grown up Baptist, so I'd never been to a Bible church before. And I had never been to hear a pastor who he would like act it out. 
the like Romans, he did the whole book. He acted it out every week, right? And so it just, I never realized I could learn the Bible. Like that. And it really changed my life. And one of the best ones of seminary, I wanted to learn more. And, but it's, I tell you that the mysteries of the Messiah, you yeah. want to share yeah, some of those? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, for example, you know, what we talk about Messiah in creation, because the idea is that everything that's written in the Bible points to Jesus in some way. We see this from the very first line in Hebrew, the Genesis opens up with the word Bereshit, its beginning, the letter B in Hebrew, the last word of the book of Revelation, the last of the Bible is where in Hebrew, the first and last letters of the Bible is called the word Ben, which means because from the first letter to the last letter, it all comes to us. And, you know, when we think about creation, think about it for a moment, it all started in the garden. I mean, the symbol of Christianity is the cross. Well, why did Jesus have to die? Well, think about it for a moment. How did sin enter the world? The first man and woman took from the tree, couldn't fix it. So God put the second Adam, Jesus, back on the tree for you and me to redeem and to repair what it is that they broke. Jesus' hands were pierced because our hands stole from the tree. His side was pierced because the first, the woman who led Adam into temptation was taken from his side. It's making an atonement for Eve as well. His feet are pierced. Why? Because what's the first message on prophecy? The seed of the woman would, would crush the head of the serpent. Satan's mocking the promises of God. He nails Jesus' feet to the tree, but he didn't realize he was actually fulfilling the promises of God. A crown of thorns on his head. Why? What's the sign of the curse of creation? The ground would produce thorns and fiddles. He's, he's literally taking the curse of creation on his head to break the curse and to restore the blessing. Oh my goodness. Did you know all that? I had not looked into the symbolism uh, and uh, all those uh, parts of the logic that I know. So no, thank you for sharing that. He was a seminary yeah. professor. Yeah. For, I tell him so much. I say, oh my gosh, with all our <laughs> seminary training, there is so much that we don't know. And a oh, lot of things that, you know, it was academic, right? Yeah. And I don't, I, I feel like we've learned so much um, in the last probably 10 years just Unbelievable. And as a, so you were a Jew, you are a Jew, I yeah, should yeah, say Jewish, you were, yeah, you Jew is by yeah, blood, right? Yeah. And then were you an unbelieving Jew? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in a traditional Jewish family in the Holy Land, New Jersey. A uh, little more Jews than Jerusalem. Yes, there are there. <laughs> and That's yeah, I was working in the music industry and the lives of all these famous people said so they're asking me to like and just this. We got a spiritual journey. Started selling with my rabbi and God just kind of led me on this path. So, well, I tell you, it's good to meet you. Uh, and one of the things that uh, we normally haven't used, I know, so that's why I'm not used to it right now, but that's all right. Um, you, your involvement with the uh, Albert Chosen, uh, what is it exactly? What does that do with them? Yeah, so I mean, I've been involved with The Chosen from its inception. From the time it was a vision to make the series, I took Dallas and uh, a number of the team to Israel because part of the decision from, from the inception is that they wanted to bring the stories into its original Jewish, historic, Israeli context. So we're like, look, we've got to go to the land of Israel. We've got to see right. where it happened and let's walk through this. And so was there when they were making the original promotional crowdfunding video in Israel. And so, you know, I've, I've helped make a number of different videos for The Chosen to help, help launch it and raise the funds for it. I was the first spiritual advisor on The Chosen, so read all the scripts for both the biblical accuracy of, of the scripts, as well as the, you know, all the Jewish aspects of the scripts, advising uh, them on. And then we also have uh, we do all the roundtables for The Chosen, behind the scenes roundtables. And then we have actually a TV show on TVN called The Chosen Unveiled, where we take clips of The Chosen and we then explain the deeper symbolism of what's going on. We have not seen that I yet. know, we I keep was just saying thinking, we need, we to, need to look at that. We do. Yeah. Well, and I, tell me what you said about the first season of The Chosen, because we went through it. We saw. I, we said many things about it, but uh, we. It took us a year after the first series came on TV before we even looked at it. 
Right. And I'm, we kept thinking, uh, we just thought it was another Jesus and Amy or something. Yeah. You know, we weren't sure. And mm-hmm. then so we, uh, but one night we, we had some time and we thought, let's, let's just watch something. And, and uh, we decided to go ahead and watch the first episode, episode one, season one. Um, so was, and uh, we watched it and we're so absolutely blown away by that. Um, because of many things, but, but the, the, the realness of it for one. Well, and the fact that um, here, here was a production that, I hate to call it that, you know, but production that portrayed Jesus and the people around him in ways that were so much more realistic than anything I'd ever seen on the screen before. And I kept thinking, this is a Jesus. This is this is a Jesus. This might be Jesus for me, you know, yeah. uh, when it comes to I don't know, face with a name. Right, right. Know, you know? And I, from, since then, we found many people who said yes. the same thing. I, I was touched, touched, touched by the compassion that you guys, whoever built into that character. Uh, the people are so good in portraying characters that they, they do. Um, that you see so many... Uh, but biblically, we were blown oh, yeah. away. You know, yes. we kept, yeah. Um, yeah. I kept asking him, he has the PhD, he was the professor for 20 right. years, and so I just was there for like seven. But I was like, um, is this act, like, what do you think about this? That you know that you, because you don't really know what the disciples were like before they met Jesus, right? Yes. But it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, what do you call that? It's not not biblical. Yeah, yeah. Look, one of the things I love about The Chosen is they've chosen to... Many of the, the Jesus films kind of portray this ethereal, otherworldly Jesus who doesn't even look like... He, he might be physically present on Earth, but he's, but he's somewhere else. Like, he's... You know, it's like, is he, is he fully there? Like, he's so heavenly-minded, it almost seems like He's unapproachable, right? What I obviously what I love about the chosen is that they really bring out the humanity of Jesus, right? And and that you know he, he was a person that you actually want to be around, and that would be a, a fun to be around and a joy to be around, and as well as kind of how the lives of the individuals who experienced him, how their lives were changed. So. Jesus, of course, is central to it, but it's also essential to it is the lives of the disciples and the individuals who find their healing, who find their encounters with God as a result of that. And I think that it's just a beautiful portrayal of Jesus that we can relate to in the heart of God, heart of the Father. And uh, Jonathan Arumi is a friend of mine that I love. He, he, he comes to our hol- house for a lot of the Jewish holidays, or yes, yeah. holidays. Yeah. and uh, you know, he, he, one he was over at our house last year for Passover. My boys turned to me and said, "Jason, they said that they said, you know, it's it's, it's a little it's a little weird that, that Jesus is sitting at the table and you're leading the Passover." <laughs> and you know, like I was wondering for you, being the Jewish biblical, you know, uh, advisor, when they're using all these really real uh, props. And so did you help with those, like, to make sure the props were truly Jewish? Yeah, yeah, truly? yeah, yeah. I mean, parts of it, yes. I mean, like, you know, they're, they're, uh, initially, you know, for example, initially when they designed the, uh, the garments that they were wearing, close to the, the tunics, uh, they didn't put the ritual fringes on them in the CC. Uh, it was like, look, there's, you know, right, you know, you got to put these on because Jesus wore them. We know he wore them because when the woman reached out to touch the hem of his garment, that's what they, she reached out and touched. Now, what is that? So, so it's like that. yeah, in, in numbers, it says on every four corner garment, you're here to put these, uh, you're to put these tassels to either the or seat seat. And they're basically fo- four folded over pieces of straw. They're not string, but they're kind of like string. And, and there's to be a, a blue, dyed blue, one of them is a bad blue to sell it. And they symbolize one reminder to be faithful to keep God's commandments. And uh, it's based on, it's connected to the fact that the children of Israel, when they sent the spies into the land, they straight after their eyes. 
And so it says, whenever you see these, you won't do like the spies did and stray after your eyes, but you'll remember to keep your eyes on me and follow, be faithful to me and follow my commandments. And that's what the woman with the issue of blood, when she reaches out and touches, uh, the diamond. Hope I can say this, we're going to see that in read the season three scripts. I can't reveal too much, but, but uh, yeah, and it's actually a fulfillment of the Messianic prophecy found in the book of the prophets, it says, and the son of, of righteousness will rise up with healing in his hands. The word for wings is the same word for the corners of the sky. So when this wind went into the flow, reaches out and touches the hem or the wings of his garment, the son of righteousness rises up and heals, and she gets healed. See, I love the authenticity. That's what you found where you were talking about. I was, and, and just that material, if you have any, uh, Biblical background or training, those things help everything come alive. I was uh, excited about to see uh, Simon the Zealot actually be from the Assassin's Guild. He daring the Sika and they actually would slip up in the crowd and execute people, you know, things like that. So I thought, yeah, but it was so subtle the way things like that are included. And so I am, I have talked up on authenticity of that series so much. And you're a huge part of that. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a blessing to be part of the community. They're a small part, you know, uh, of, of, you know, a small part of the, of the, of the process. And yeah, it's, it's incredible to see what God is, is doing with it. It's helped me, you know, and part of it is to understand, like, Simon Zealot, right? I'm like, but I didn't know he was an assassin, and he looked at me. Okay, well, I didn't think of it like that, right? Like, so to me, seeing it, I'm a person that kind of needs to see it all. And um, it's been, I just get so excited about it. It's been amazing. And we've told so many people, let me ask you, 